Hi guys, welcome back. It's been a long while. Yesterday was a super exciting day. It was the Christmas Eve for all iOS developers. It was WWDC. We got very, very clear confirmation that Apple is invested and very serious about its augmented reality ambitions. And in this video, I'll tell you about the three top AR announcements made by Apple yesterday. And this is the one that excites me and thrills me the most. This is something I never expected, to be honest. And if you've seen my roadmap for learning AR, you would have noticed that I included a section where you have to spend time learning 3D content, how to build 3D model. Now, this is one of the biggest, biggest exciting news yesterday in the WWC event. Apple is removing this barrier to entry completely. Typically, if you want to build a 3D model, you have to learn 3D modeling software like Blender, Maya, or ZBrush. And that takes a lot of time. And I've proposed using VR to build 3D models with your hands, sculpt them, and import them into Reality Composer. But that again, involves some effort. But now Apple is taking all of these and eradicating all of that effort. And it's simply replacing that with your camera. In other words, can you imagine taking photos of a model in the real world and turning that into a 3D object that is optimized for AR? Now that's amazing. Imagine just using your iPhone camera, take pictures of the bicycle in my bed, not in my bed, <laughs> next to my bed, and turn that into a 3D model and use it in your AR app. Or take the picture of my laptop and turn that into a 3D model and use it in my AR app. The amazing thing is, according to them, these are optimized for AR. So it's not like huge uh, file sizes or lots of vertices, but they very optimized for AR uses. That's why they build this. Now this is amazing. Object capture, it's gonna change the way 3D models are gonna be created. Think from Apple's perspective, right? Apple, they got a lot of developers, but most of them are programmers. But when the AR glasses is announced, what they want, Apple wants, is their developers creating AR apps for their platform, their glasses. And for that, they have to eradicate one of the barriers to entry, which is building 3D content. Most programmers and developers, they don't know how to build 3D models. 3D model, 3D modeling is a different art and craft in itself. So what Apple's doing here, it's, it's allowing developers with programming experience to build 3D content by simply using their cameras. So they don't even need to make it, they could just use their cameras and get 3D content and art for their work. This is literally Apple screaming out loud saying, developers prepare the 3D world is coming and here you go, there's a tool for you to build 3D content with and use that to build AR apps please. That's what they're saying essentially. So that's why I find this exciting. You can literally capture 3D models with the camera of your phone. Now, how can you do this? I'll do a more in-depth tutorial on how to do it once I explore this a bit more and try it out myself. But according to the website, it's only available on Mac OS 12 and later versions, which means it's only available for Mac users. If you have Windows laptops, no, you can't do it. But if you have Mac, yes, you can. Yeah, that's just Apple style always, right? And one of, one of the intriguing aspects of this is I wonder how many photos in your library that you've captured from your past, maybe in one of your travels, how many of those could you already convert into a 3D model? Do you have enough angles shot and everything? Who knows? WWDC, actually in the state of the pl platform union, they announced Reality Kit 2 and their website has got more documentation on it and there'll be more sessions coming up this week. So once I've seen that, I'll create more in-depth tutorials on it. But it looks like right now, Apple has created a fully feature-rich Reality Kit 2. So Reality Kit is like the game engine equivalent for that Apple has made to allow developers to build the future AR apps and stuff. Previously, you would, you would have had to use SceneKit, which is more optimized for like 2D smartphone games. So Reality Kit is essentially like the Unity equivalent that Apple's building. And before, Reality Kit was not very feature-rich. It didn't have any custom shaders. Now it has other features with Reality Kit 2. They said there was character controller, which means you could make, say, a character in your AR game, jump around, move around, and they're essentially abstracting a lot of those functionalities away. And a lot, I also saw a lot of new animations in their classes. I need to play around and see what that is. And procedural mesh generation is also one interesting stuff. Um, previously, you would have to have primitive shapes that's essentially pre-made, but now you could procedurally, which means in code in real time, the users could generate their own shapes and virtually any 3D shape with these procedural mesh generation. But in overall, you can see the gist of it. Delta Kit has way more features now. I can't wait to play around with it and see what's there. Finally, the number three 
AR announcement was the ARKit 5. The ARKit 5 was not too much of the focus. It's getting some small updates. Again, we'll know more as the week progresses on with all the sessions, but it looks like there's location anchors expanding to more cities. Before it was mostly in the US, now it's expanding to other cities, like it's coming to London, which is close to where I live, which is exciting. I'm gonna try it out there. With location anchors, I can create an experience where anyone who goes to London I will see a virtual experience that I lock onto the London Eye. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an app and share it with you all. And this app, if you go to London Eye, what you'll see is locked onto London Eye, probably vertically, you'll see my face screaming out loud saying, subscribe to my channel, guys, subscribe. So anyone who uses this app will get that wonderful experience. I'm sure you would love it. By the way, that was sarcasm. I'm not actually gonna do it. Don't, get, oh, please don't travel to London looking for that app, if any of you I actually thought about it. Uh, maybe if I once I get a larger audience, I might do why not increase tourism in London. Oh, that's a, I can see a good business deal coming out of it. So what is this all pointing to? Object capture, i.e., 3D content creation made easy, reality kit, a game engine fully feature rich to build AR experiences, and AR Kit 5 updates. All these are pointing to Apple's future ambitions for AR. Apple Glosses is coming. I'm more confident than ever. Why would Apple create object capture? Like why? Okay, I'm gonna create 3D content and put it in my app, but for what, to view it from my phone? No, creating tools like this so that they can create a plethora of content, a sea full of content, which is all 3D. So when they release their hardware, there'll be a huge pool of 3D content and experiences, which could be enjoyed with those glosses. And remember, hardwares are meaningless and pointless without content. So it's a chicken and egg problem. To make the glosses valuable, you need a lot of content for users to experience and enjoy at release. And you, you can't have a lot of content without the actual glosses. So what Apple is doing now is very smart because they are laying the groundworks for that future, the groundworks with a lot of content. So when the glosses comes, they could source all this stuff in it. Now is the perfect time to learn and prepare for it because when the glosses comes, you want to be building awesome products for it. And right now would be the period where you could learn, gain an edge to the competition when the time comes. So that is why I created this channel, to document my journey to this era, both through tutorials and high level videos. And I'll see you very soon because I'm gonna jump in and learn all this stuff and share with you guys what I learned.